Hey ladies, please go ahead, like this video, subscribe, and join my mailing list so you can have access to the Sugar Lady Academy. This is where you go to receive spiritual downloads and transmissions from my dark feminine brain into your brain so you can build new neuropathways and gain a whole new way of looking at men, at looking at money, and looking at your life so you can live your sweetest life possible. Hey ladies, this video is about what I would do if I was about 40 years old, had no children, always desired to be a mother. The only things that were stopping me from having a baby or that have stopped me all these years from having a baby is the fact that I couldn't find a good man to have one with and I didn't want to have one on my own because I didn't think I could afford it without a man's financial contribution. Uh, me personally, and you guys know that I live in a different way. I kind of just do things the unconventional way many times. I'm not afraid to just go and live differently. What I would do if I was in that situation is I would ask myself first, do I have enough money to support a child on my own? Because even if I were to get together with a great man who's a great provider and we got married and then uh, we had a baby, what would happen if he became a bad man? a couple years into their relationship. What if he started drinking? What if I found out he had certain addictions that I didn't know about before? What if he started uh, becoming violent? What if he started harming our child? What if certain things about his personality started to come through to where I needed to leave him and I needed to take my child to protect my child? Well, if I came into the relationship with really no money and no way to make any money, that would be very scary because I would be stuck with this man and not able to leave. So that would be the first thing I would think about is, can I afford this child on my own? I'm not saying that women should be single mothers and should support their children on their own. Absolutely not. But they need to be able to have enough money that if they needed to, if they needed to leave their provider man, they can just up and go with no problems okay there's a lot of women who've been trapped in dangerous relationships for many years because they were financially disempowered and they could not leave so i would never want that to happen to anybody who's subscribed to this channel that's why i'm giving this advice that would be the first thing i would ask myself if i were 40 and i wanted to have a baby and i didn't have a man and you know even if i did end up with a great man who was a provider I wouldn't even want to have a baby with him until I had a way that I could take care of the child by myself if he were to change. So that would be the first thing. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that further into the video. That would be the first thing. And then I would also ask myself, do I want to be a mother so badly or is it that I want to have a family and a man so badly? I would try to figure out which thing is really the thing that I want because you can have a child without having a husband. So is it really motherhood my soul desires or is it the whole entire family unit? You know, the mom and the dad and the child. If the answer was I really want to be a mom. It would be best if I could have it with a wonderful man, but if I couldn't find a wonderful man in the amount of time, okay, because if I'm 40, I'm thinking I'm getting very near to the end of the time that I'll be able to conceive naturally. So I want to do it now, but I don't have any man on my roster that I think is going to make an exceptional husband and an exceptional father and be an exceptional provider, but I need to get pregnant sometime very soon. So then I would think about that and say, well, if my desire is motherhood above all else and I do not want to miss out on the opportunity, I would absolutely not let the fact that I don't have the perfect man stop me from getting to be a mother. I would not let that be the reason I never had kids. I would still become a mother. And if I was 40 years old, deeply desired 
motherhood and I also didn't have enough money and didn't see a way to have enough money to care for the child on my own, my next step would be, I would say, well, if there's really no way I can earn more money, the next thing I would do is say, where could I go? Where and how could I live where it costs less money to live? Ladies, you don't necessarily need a lot of money to live a very high quality lifestyle. And I'm telling you this out of my own experience. This is something I realized years ago and I decided to start creating a life in another country. If I were 40 and had no kids and had no man to have the kids with and didn't have a whole bunch of money, I would go online and I would apply for customer service jobs, online remote jobs. Yes, these jobs do not pay a lot of money. I would answer the phone for Verizon or T-Mobile or one of the many companies out there. And because I speak English, I am going to be very employable. I'm going to be highly desired for these types of jobs. I would apply for all of those types of jobs. There are little uh, certificate programs you can take to learn customer service skills. That would be very affordable and very uh, fast. So I would do that and I would apply for those jobs and I would get some online jobs, remote jobs. And yes, these jobs probably pay minimum wage, maybe a little bit more. And in the United States of America, that's not enough money to take care of yourself and a child. It's not. But that amount of money is plenty of money to live in a country like the Dominican Republic. So I would get one of those kind of jobs and then I would sell all of my things and um, I would get a plane ticket and I would go to the Dominican Republic and I would find a very affordable place to live and I would bring my laptop and my suitcase and I would do my remote job and being that I'm a U.S. citizen, it means I'm still going to be getting paid the minimum wage that a U.S. citizen would be making. But the only difference is I'm living in a country where everything costs way, way, way less. So um, I would live there and yes, maybe I'll make three or four hundred dollars a week. I'm not really sure because I'm not in that world of jobs and things like that. But I think minimum wage people probably make something somewhere around there, right? Three, four hundred dollars a week if they're working full time, you know, after taxes and all that. So I would work a customer service type job, a remote job, and I would live in the Dominican Republic and I would find an apartment or a house that's about two or three hundred dollars per month and um, my cost of food would be lower as long as I'm eating natural foods that grow there, not like name brand products that have to be shipped in. If you're eating healthy and you're eating fruits and vegetables and things like that, things that grow there, they're gonna be healthier for you, one, and two, they're not gonna cost all that much money. Um, my rent will be much lower. Um, health insurance will be very, very cheap. Car insurance, if you even want to take a car, depending on where you live, you won't even need one. If you can walk to the grocery store and you know, to the stores and to the beaches, there are many places like that where you don't even really need a car, depending on where you're located. And I would set up my life down there and I would walk around town and I would meet people. People are very friendly there and men would hit on me, especially because I'm American. And I would look around all the different men that are interested in me and I would look for the one that looks the most genetically sound, the one that looks the healthiest, the one who has the type of facial features that I'm attracted to. And I would pretty much just, you know, look at the men and I would sum them up by the way they look. Because at this point, I'm not looking for, you know, a magical, perfect man that I'm going to marry and, you know, have a magical relationship. At this point, I'm looking for somebody that is genetically strong, genetically sound, somebody who does not appear to be on drugs or anything like that, somebody that looks healthy. 
and I would have sex with him. I would have him come to my house every single day and have sex with me over and over. No, first I would take him down to the hospital. It costs about $12 to get full panel STD screening and I would have him checked out first and he would comply because he gets to have sex with me. Um, I would pay the 12 bucks and I would wait for the results to come back and then I would have him come to my house and we would have sex every single day, every single day for as long as it took and I would get pregnant by him. And then I would just continue to live my life in my affordable home where my, you know, where my bills are very low, where my online customer service job can afford to pay all of these bills and my medical insurance and my food and everything I need to live a decent life. And I would be pregnant down there and I would give birth to my child down there and I would continue to live there and I would be able to afford my child all by myself. And if the man wants to contribute, he can contribute and that will be even better financially. If he doesn't want to, no big deal. At least I know he lives down the road and when my child wants to know their father, I know exactly where he is. He's just, you know, he lives down the street and my child will know who their father is. My child will not have to experience any kind of weird, messy divorce when they're, you know, six years old or 10 years old. They will just be born into a single family home with their mom and there won't be trauma of, you know, of the breakup and everything else. I will be able to afford the child even though in in the United States, I wouldn't be able to afford one alone, but in the Dominican Republic, as long as I am working a remote job that pays me United States minimum wage, we're going to live a good life as long as we don't move back to the United States. So I would stay there and I would also probably choose the Dominican Republic out of the other options because it's very easy for U.S. citizens to go down there and live down there. Even if you overstay, you're welcome. You're supposed to leave once every 90 days, I believe. If you want, you can just take a bus to Haiti once a month, cross over the border, and then turn around and come right back and hop on the bus. They stay your passport and you have technically left the country once every 90 days and you won't get in any kind of trouble and um, if you don't even want to do that you can just stay for years and years and years and years and years when you do want to maybe go home to the United States to visit your family in 10 years or something when you get to the airport they will see that you've overstayed your welcome and they charge you about one I think it's $130 per year that you didn't exit the country the way you were supposed to. It's really no big deal. You just pay the money and you fly out and then you fly back into the country. It's really, you know, there's really not even a lot of reasons why an American citizen would want to apply for Dominican citizenship or residency. Some people who own businesses and things like that, they like to do it. But if you're just working a remote customer service job, there's probably not a whole lot of benefit for you to apply for residency. So that's what I would do. I have actually seen people that have done things like this. I have a friend in the DR. She's actually, um, she came from London, England many years ago. She's actually from an Indian family. And uh, she got pregnant and she was not married. Her family was very, very, very upset about this. You know, that's not part of their culture. That's just not something that is allowed to happen. Um, she wanted to carry her pregnancy full term. Um, she's kind of um, this very unafraid, non-conforming type of Indian girl. So she knew what she had to do. She knew um, she wanted to keep her baby and she was going to have to be a single mother. And she also didn't want to deal with her family being very upset with her and treating her a certain way. She knew she just had to go and live in the Dominican Republic, so she did. She lived in the Dominican Republic. That's where she lives now. She's been a single mother. She still keeps in contact with her family on the phone. I think she flies to see them every once in a while, but she doesn't want to raise her child around 
around them or live near them. Um, she knows she has shamed her family. She also knows that she needs to take care of the child by herself financially. So this was her decision. Her child is about 10 years old right now. He is a beautiful little boy and she takes very good care of him because she's able to take really good care of him because her cost of living is low down there. So she's been able to give him a good quality life. She now works in real estate and she makes plenty of money to care for him being a single mom. She even sends him to a very good um, American school down there. And um, if he wants to move to the United States or to somewhere else in the world, once, uh, once he graduates from high school, all of um, the credits will transfer. You know, it's a very good situation for him. She's been able to take care of him on her own because it's been very affordable. Um, I also know of some other women who are living down there. They are American women, specifically African-American women that were single mothers that became single mothers in the United States and they got sick of that type of life and they packed up with their with their small child or small children and moved to the Dominican Republic. They work remotely. They provide a very nice lifestyle for their kids. They can afford it. They can afford it because life just costs less money. That's what they do. And I don't believe they have any intention of returning. They have some of their family members fly to them during vacation time. And, you know, they stay at their house there in the... Dominican Republic and that's how they get to still see their families and you know it seems to be working out quite nicely and they don't have to live in the American rat race of just working all the time to barely afford their bills and not be able to see their kids and you know spending a lot of money on child care expenses and medical insurance and all of the things that really make life in the U.S. difficult for a lot of people. So um, these women have figured out a way to change that. Um, I also know another lady. She is, I think she's from Ukraine. She's a Caucasian lady and she's older. She's got to be around 47 and she has a boy. She's got a son who's probably about 10. So she had him a little bit later in life. She came to the Dominican Republic by herself at one point. I'm not sure if it was like maybe to study Spanish. I don't know. But she had some reason to be in the Dominican Republic. She had never had a child. She ended up having a child. Um, the child's father is Dominican. I'm not sure if she planned it this way or she just got pregnant by a guy she met down there. But anyway, she's been down there for more than a decade. She lives near me in my town and she's actually, um, she's not with the father. Another guy from like Russia or Germany or Ukraine, he was down there for something and they actually met at my dance school and they've been together for maybe about five years now. So she's got her son from a Dominican man she met when she was, you know, in her late 30s and I guess they're not together anymore but now she's with this guy that I think is from her country and um, he lives down there too and now they're together and he's the stepfather to her half Dominican child. So this is not an uncommon thing. Like I've met women down here who are doing the single mother thing and they can afford their lifestyle for their children. And I just think um, it's an option. And if that's the situation I was in, I'm not in that situation because I actually had my children um, when I was just a teenager. So I've never experienced the thing I see a lot of my friends going through where they waited and waited and waited because they wanted to do everything perfectly and, you know, have the children with a perfect man in a perfect financial situation. But then they didn't end up finding a man that was good enough to, you know, to have a child with. And some of my friends are like freaking out because they know, you know, they're in like their late 30s or they're in their 40s and they really want to have a child. I just feel bad for them. And if that were me that were in that situation, I would ask myself, do I want motherhood or do I want the whole family with the man? And I would see which one I want more. And if it's actually true in my soul that 
motherhood is more important to me than the whole family situation with the husband, I would just go ahead and have a baby. And if I couldn't figure out how to make a lot more money in the U.S., I would take a minimum wage job online and I would just go live in a country where U.S. minimum wage is a lot of money. And I would just live like a middle class lifestyle in another country. And single motherhood is really not so bad when you have enough money. It's not. Single motherhood sucks when you're poor. That's what sucks about single motherhood is just being poor and working hard all the time and spending all the money on childcare and health insurance and you know, just being stressed out all the time. Single motherhood, when all your bills are paid and you have enough and you get to spend time with your children, is like a pretty good life. No, you may not have a perfect man there, but ladies, you also need to remember that even if you do find a perfect man, he's still a human being. He's going to be annoying. He's going to be gross. He's going to have things about him as time goes on, things that you're not going to like so much. Don't get infatuated with these men. Yes, they're good to have if you can find a good quality one, but... They're, it's not the end of the world. You can still have a nice home and money and friends and love and children and family without having a perfect husband. Don't put your life to a halt because you haven't found the perfect husband yet, okay? Don't let so much time pass that you can't have a pregnancy and a baby. If that's important to you, if that's super important to you, don't let the details stop you from having it. There are ways to do it. And this is just one of the many ways. And I just wanted to make this video to tell you guys what I would personally do. And um, I see other women out here in the DR that are living that life. And they appear to be doing quite well. And if they went back to the United States or back to London with their children, I don't think the quality of life would be the same. That's why they're in the DR and it appears that they're staying there. So that's what I would do. I would take what I have. I would take the amount of fertility I still have left and I would make the most out of it. I would totally make the most out of it. Make the most out of my life. And it may not be the picture perfect situation that I had envisioned as a child, but I may actually end up with something that's even better. And I'm only saying this out of my own experience being a single mother for many years. There were things about it that made me sad, but there were also things about it that were really great. Like the fact that I could make all the choices for my children by myself and I didn't need to consult with their father for anything. I didn't need to get his permission. If I wanted to switch their schools, I would just switch their schools. If I wanted to move to a, to a new neighborhood, I would just move to a new neighborhood. If I wanted to take my child traveling somewhere, I didn't need to ask his permission. Like. They belonged to me. All the decisions were made by me. You know, when it was time for, you know, for my child to start wearing makeup or something, that decision was up to me. I didn't have to ask her father, say, oh, do you think it's okay for her to start wearing makeup to school? I didn't need to get anybody else's input on anything. Every choice was my own. And that's like... <laughs> That's something that I think a lot of people don't appreciate unless they've had the opposite. But for me, that's like a wonderful gift right there to be the person that makes all the decisions, to have that type of control. Just it makes things easier and just more simple. Single motherhood is not all that bad. The thing about single motherhood that sucks is not having enough money to give your children the type of life you want for them and that they deserve. That's what sucks about single motherhood, not the other stuff. The other stuff, it's really not a big deal. 
So that's what I would do. I hope this video maybe gave you some ideas for yourself and um, maybe gave you a little bit of hope or a new perspective on the situation. And yeah, I hope I was helpful. Talk to you later. Bye for now.